Wow, you have joined us at the um, conclusion, or as we conclude, our Ascension Retreat. And so you get to join in the, the culmination of what we've been talking about over the last few days. And um, just in case you're wondering, this is what we've been talking about over the last few days. No. How long have you been here? <laughs> 36 hours? <laughs> feels like you've been here. It feels like it's been a long time, doesn't it, this week? It's been good to be together. We have been talking about the ascended Jesus, who was prophet, the word of God, priest, the symbol of the priest, and king. Yeah. Prophet, priest, and king. But on Tuesday night, when we began, we considered first of all that in order for Jesus to ascend, he first had to come down. And we looked at his humanity. And I read a little um, excerpt from a book, and I'm going to read a little tiny excerpt of it again. And the book is Oriel's Diary. And Oriel is an archangel who uh, was, according to this account, who was assigned to Jesus for his time on earth. So it's, um, it is the story of Jesus, but it is um, using a little bit of imagination as well. And Oriel writes this. Right at the beginning, he writes this. And now, the one who held every atom in his grasp is no more than a clutch of watery cells in the midst of a teenage girl, in an obscure village, in a defeated nation, on one of the smaller planets that orbit an ordinary star, in an uneventful galaxy that turns on its little axis in that gassy cloud that is the universe, which the sun himself made. Such smallness I can barely begin to imagine. And then he says, this is love. That's how it began. Can you imagine the infinity of Jesus in a clutch of watery cells? Amazing, isn't it? And we looked at then over the last 24 hours how Jesus on earth fulfilled the role of prophet, priest and king. He didn't necessarily hold those titles while he was on earth, but we, because we'd looked at what the Old Testament meanings of prophet, priest and king was and, and how that was fulfilled, we could see the echoes of Jesus in prophet, priest and king and how he did it even though he wasn't necessarily called it, if that makes sense. And when we come to his ascension, we have to consider that the ascension is not the forgotten bit of the resurrection. As one of the quotes said, typically we treat the ascension as little more than a dazzling exclamation point for the resurrection, rather than a new event in its own right. I grew up in a, um, a kind of a church background that um, ignored the ascension, really. Um, but we, we barely celebrated it. And so it was a whole new discovery to get to um, understand what the ascension was really all about. And we've looked over the last 24 hours that the ascension enables Jesus to function as titled prophet, priest and king at the right hand of God the Father. And we've had an exciting journey, much more than I can um, encapsulate for you today. So I'm going to look at um, 
um, a couple of aspects of the ascension and then just a little bit more about what the ascension has done for us. And I'm going to read from Luke 24, just a couple of verses, the very last two verses actually of Luke. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. The ascension was different to the resurrection appearances. And you know um, from the Gospels that Jesus had appeared to his disciples and other people a number of times since he had been raised from the dead. And how he had then left them. This was different. His parting this time was different. He ascends and they watch him go. And it was meant to be different because it was meant to convey the message that this was the last time. This was the final parting. No more appearances as there had been after the resurrection. This was the final parting. But the disciples are rejoicing. They're not grief-stricken. So there was something about this that was life imparting. And I love the fact that there is another aspect of the ascension. If you like, what I've just read is the earth side. Okay? But there is a heavenly viewpoint of the ascension as well. And that we have to go back into the Old Testament for. We have to go back to Daniel. And Daniel chapter 7, um, verse 13 and 14 say this. So you have to imagine you're in heaven now. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days. We've been singing about the Ancient of Days. And was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. I love the fact that we see the ascension from the point of view of earth and we can see it from the other side, from heaven. And it's almost like there's two aspects of the ascension. Jesus ascended because he had the right to do so. There's that psalm, isn't there? Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? One who has clean hands and pure heart. Jesus was that. He could ascend. But the other side of it is that in a sense, God drew him up. God exalted him. So Jesus went up, but God drew him up. Because it says in Philippians, God exalted him to the highest place. So God raised him and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus ascended and was exalted. Can you imagine the party in heaven? Can you imagine the party? Well, Oriel writes about the party at the other end of the book. And he says this, When Jesus arrived 
a great cheer went up from both humans and angels. It was so good to see father and son back together as one. I watched them embrace and realized what a great strain their separation had been. The two of them began to dance ecstatically around the vast hall, accompanied by the singing of the assembled multitude. As I looked forwards into my boss's timeless home, that's God, I saw that everyone who ever loved him was already gathered. Yet when I looked back towards earth, the shining men and women that I had seen this morning, that's the disciples when Jesus had um, blessed them, were still arriving. Looking down towards Jerusalem, I realized that my boss's life was still stretched between heaven and earth because the director, that's the Holy Spirit, was now living in the spirits of Jesus' followers sharing the continuing traumas of human existence. The son and his dad danced their way up to me and stopped, radiant smiles dominating their faces. And then it goes on. Food was served and they went to a party. I'm sorry if you were planning on buying the book because you've now had the beginning and the end. <laughs> There was another reason that Jesus went. We've looked at the last couple of days because um, in order for um, Jesus had to go because he was bound in time and space when he was a man and the Holy Spirit came in his place and could be everywhere. But there was another reason and that was because job done. Job done. When he was on the cross, he said, it is finished, it is accomplished. And the Greek word, tetelestai, I don't know if I've said that right, but anyway, tetelestai, something like that. And that word means to bring to an end, complete, fulfill, finish, accomplish, pay. It means the consummation, the completion, to properly complete. It's like, like reading a thesaurus, isn't it? But it also means this. It is finished and will continue to be finished. There is no more to be done in terms of salvation. It is done. That's worth an amen, isn't it? It's done. Hallelujah. So as prophet in heaven, Jesus continues the revelation of God the Father. Yes, we have the revelation in scripture, but he continues the revelation to us of the character of God by the Holy Spirit. And he intercedes for us. As the great high priest, he ripped the the veil in the Holy of Holies top to bottom allowing access into the presence of God so we are forgiven and stand forgiven in the presence of God something that the people of Israel could not do they could not go into the Holy of Holies and as king he reigns eternal forever So the three offices of prophet, priest and king completed, filled, full, fulfilled by Jesus. The prophets in the Old Testament, the priests, the kings, they came and went, they did good, they didn't do it quite so good. Jesus, perfect. I'm going to read Daniel again. In my vision at night I looked and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given 
authority, glory, sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. And when Jesus ascended, one of the things we haven't looked at over the last 24 hours, the church was empowered to accomplish its mission, to make Jesus' name known across the world and through the peoples. The Holy Spirit empowers So as Jesus ascended, it marked the completion of his work on earth. The beginning, if you like, of his reign in heaven at the right hand of God. And the beginning of a new phase of work for the church, that's you and me. With the Holy Spirit to empower us, equip us, resource us, enable us to do his work. And Jesus pledged that, didn't he? Just before he ascended. And as he ascended, he blessed the people. Not a kind of a God bless you type um, simple thing, but a much more profound, much more profound blessing. The word that was used for blessing, eulogio. Good, well good. We get the word eulogy from it. Well, good. It spoke of a conferring of a blessing, of a benefit, a benediction of praise and to prosper and well-being on that person, calling down God's favour on them. I want that. Do you want that? Yes. God's favour. And it can happen because Jesus is the root of that blessing. Salvation has been completed. Amen.